All right, guys. So I'm sure a lot of people are aware that for the past few years, the Blender developers have been completely rewriting the compositor to make it much more powerful. And what I wanted to do is see if I can try and break it. And to do that, I'm going to use one of the most intensive but lesser known features of Turbo Tools, which is real-time compositing during playback directly in the compositor's backdrop. And if you'd like to support the channel and massively speed up your cycles renders, then check out Turbo Tools using the link in the description below. It works by building advanced studio quality denoising networks, allowing you to use the lowest possible number of samples, and it will tailor those to each individual scene, or to make sample settings and give you much faster compositing. And another big feature is that it will remove flicker from animations that would otherwise require you to render for up to 40 times longer to get rid of. All right, so let's get started using this incredible scene from Eben Schumacher of ebenschumacherart.com. Firstly, we'll just start off with something simple. So Shift A, put down an RGB curve node, drop that in there, and we'll probably mess about with the levels. And to do that, I'm just going to bring up the scopes in the image editor and just make sure I set this to be parade, which it already is. And you can see these are moving around in real time. Let's just turn the waveform opacity up. And we'll also go to samples and set this to full sample so we can see it all. So these are the values we've got. And what I want to do is get all of the values between 0 and 100, as we can see over here, so that we've got the absolute best brightness and, and darkness as well. So we'll start off. Join playback. I'm going to move this on the RGB curve node just until on the right hand side, those are touching the very top which basically means we're getting it as bright as possible without going over the 100, which would introduce clipping. All right, so now we'll add another RGB curve now, so Shift D, move that across. I'll just reset it with backspace. And actually, I've just realized something. I did think, why is this all the way over there, but it's still not going above one? And this is, this is something to bear in mind, actually. If you are going to be manually doing compositing, you always want to come down in the render panel, down to the color management, and we just want to turn off filmic because that's basically whenever I do something in here, this is sort of doing its own thing to try and fix it, which is not what I want. I want to make sure I've got full control. So I'm going to change this to standard. Now you can see it's gone way above. Uh, make sure this is on non for the look, exposure zero and gamma one. All right, so now we can start again. We'll just put this over here. And these are the correct values now. So push this up. I just want to get the majority of this. I don't mind if you get a tiny bit of clipping, but I want to get most of those values at around about the 100 mark. And then for the darks, I want to bring these down a little bit so that these are touching the zero line. So for this one, I'll just bring this one down. So something like this. It's gone below, but now I can use the factor to get a bit more fine control to bring those exactly where I want them. So I think that's probably about as low as I can get it without going below the zero line. All right, so we're still doing well. By the way, this is a 1080p uh, render, and I'm in Turbo Tools, I've got it set to frame dropping. If I put it to play every frame, then it's going to go slower, whereas if I put it to frame dropping, it's going to drop frames in order to maintain the correct FPS. So I put that back to frame dropping. Now we've got full speed, it's just dropping a few frames. All right, so we're still going strong. Uh, let's try something a bit more ambitious. We'll go with some of the filter tools, which are quite intensive. So maybe we'll go with the, uh, let's try the glare node, drop this in. And by the way, I've made sure I've set in the render panel under performance, if we can find it here, I've set the G, the compositor to use the GPU for the device it's gonna calculate the nodes on. If I put it to CPU, then it's okay at the moment, because it, we're not doing a huge amount, but as soon as I start adding a lot of nodes, the CPU will become much slower than the GPU. So I'll put it back to GPU. Right. Okay, so we're still doing well, but we've not actually implemented this yet. So we need to go into the highlights and just reduce the threshold. So we start seeing an effect and I'll change this to ghost. And now we can see quite a strong effect on there. Okay, so still going well, shift A, and we'll go with another filter maybe the Kawara, if that's how you pronounce it, I've no idea. I'll drop this in here, and now it's more of a paintbrush effect, so it's still going well. Uh, Shift-A, 
Uh, let's go with, I don't know, let's, let's try actually something new. If, I don't know when these were introduced, but we've now got textures. We've got noise textures, which we used to have to do in the, over here, we used to have a, a texture panel at the bottom. We'd have to create the textures in and then bring them in. We don't need to do that anymore. So shift A. If you know when that was implemented, by the way, let me know in the comments, because I've, I've got no idea on that one. A mix node, drop this in here. And make sure we set this to color. I don't know why that's disconnected. We'll plug it back in. It's quite annoying when Blender does that. Anyway, pull that over there. Right. And I want to use a noise. So shift A. I'm going to search for noise, texture. Drop this in here. I'm going to plug the factor into the bottom. And if we just slide this to one, we'll only see the noise. So this is good if you want to add smoke and things like that. But at the moment, it's static. So I'm actually going to change this from 3D to 4D. So we've got an extra dimension, which is actually time. And then I can just put a little bit of code in there. So hashtag frame divided by 150. If we play this back now, we're actually going to get a motion in the smoke. And we can mess about with the scale and things until we get an effect we like. All right, so now we put this back to maybe 0.2 or something like that. We've got the smoke actually over the uh, the demon. But we're still going strong, so that's the main thing I'm testing. And what else can we add? So shift A, maybe we'll put in a maybe a color adjustment. So we'll go with a color correction. This is quite an intensive one. So drop this in here. Move that onto the wire. And it did temporarily slow down, but it's still it's still not crashed. That's the main thing I'm looking for. So I'll just play about with a few of these settings. And we'll bring those blacks down now because I've messed those up. So in the shadows, we'll just bring those down a bit. Okay. Um, something else we could try. Shift A. This is quite a common one. We'll do a lens distortion. Drop this in. And we'll just make sure we change it to fit. And we'll change the dispersion really high to 1. And just for an example of how slow this used to be, if I switch this to CPU now, look at that. We're barely getting any frames at all. So back to GPU, and it's uh, it's usable. And we can, of course, speed this up by using a scale node to reduce the resolution briefly, just directly after the cache. But I'm not going to do that because I'm trying to crash it. Shift A. What else have we got? A color. Maybe color balance. We'll drop this one in. And then maybe I want to make the darks red or blue. Maybe go with the red, seems better for a demon. And we could probably bring the gamma up a little bit. Like this. So shift A. Maybe we'll go under, uh, what else have we got? Filter, we'll do a blur. Maybe we could go with the directional blur. So we'll drop this in, put this in here, and maybe give it a bit of a, a spin. So maybe we could put it to 45. Going to rotate it by 45 times, and then we'll actually push this to calculate uh, 16 times. And now you see we've got a much smoother result on this, and we can see it over here as well. Okay, uh, something else you might want to do. I'm not too keen on that. I'm going to actually let's do, let's mute this for now. Something else we could do is try and modify the saturation in such a way that we don't lose the perceptual brightness between different colors. Because different colours, like red, is is more perceivably dark than yellow, for example. Um, so we can try and modify that. If we use this hue saturation node, and we reduce the saturation, you'll see the brightness. It becomes all the same. So we lose that perceivable difference between different colours. So we'll go to Shift A. We'll put down a BW, so RGB to BW node. We'll plug this one in here, and then we'll create a mix node. Shift A mix color and i want to mix the black and white version with the color version okay and it, let's just do a comparison between these two so shift a put down a switch node so we can compare easily put this one in here okay so if i switch this on and then we'll turn the we'll do the same look at the difference blender saturation node makes all of the different colors the same sort of level 
when it's in black and white. Whereas if we look at this one, we can see the perceivable brightness of the different colors is maintained. So let's try and make this a little bit more intensive. We'll duplicate the entire branch and then we'll mix these two together. So I'll just copy this one, Shift D, mix that across, uh, copy that across, plug this in here. And now basically we've doubled the workload of the compositor because that 1080p image is running through two branches instead of one. All right, so we're not managing to crash it just yet. Let's try duplicating that again. I'll make sure I set both of these by way to 0 0.5 and 0.5 on there as well. So it's still going strong. Even with three branches that are containing quite expensive nodes, we're still managing to get playback. Um, and it's calculating all of these fast enough to actually be able to um, you know, give us reasonable playback performance. Even at this, you know, we've got more than 4K's worth of um, calculations going on now. So what I could do, let's try, i just put a reroute in here. Let's try animating some of these values in real time. So I'm going to bring this up down here. Just move this across now. And we'll change this to a graph editor. And let's, we need to stop playback. Go to frame 200, which is the beginning of this animation. I'm just going to start adding some keyframes so that I can animate them during playback. So let's have a look which one could we animate. In fact, let's drop a new one in. One that's quite obvious. We'll do Shift A. And I'll put down another RGB curve node. Drop this in, and I'm going to pump this right up now. So pump that right up. So it's obvious that it's been animated. And I'm just going to go into the factor and press I. So what that means is I've added a keyframe. If you press home over the graph editor, let's bring that up a bit. We can actually see we've got a keyframe now, which enables me to start adding new keyframes during playback. If we go down over here, make sure we select the node. We can choose, it will show over here, and we can choose the track. I'll begin playback. Let's just bring this down a bit now and make these a bit more out of the way. What I can do is I can right click, I can control right click to add new keyframes during playback. So I'll add one there maybe. And if I just select it, I can bring it down. And we're going to start seeing that's actually taking an effect in real time during playback. So maybe I'm going to bring this one across here. So that's working. That's that's pretty impressive. What else could we do? Let's maybe, I don't know, let's add a, a lens distortion. So Shift A, we'll put down a lens distortion. And we'll choose to fit. Did I already add one of those? I can't remember. Hang on. Yes, I did. But we'll do it again. So lens distortion, I'm going to put this to one. So we're getting some of that chromatic aberration again. I think it always looks pretty cool. You wouldn't want a value this high on a standard render because it would look ridiculous, but just to, uh, you know, just for fun. So let me maybe change this a little bit. Use distortion to push him further back. Like that. So I'm not having much luck so far destroying it. One thing that should crash it is if I double this entire network. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, ten, eighty p's being calculated, and this one. And I'm, I'm, I'm certain this must crash it. I don't think there's a compositor on earth that would be able to handle this. So I am being a bit unfair, perhaps. But to, for it to get this far, is pretty insane. And considering I'm also recording as well on OBS, this must must crash it. I mean, I just can't see this being able to work. So, moment of truth, is my computer going to explode? I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> that is insane. Right. <laughs> um, what about, I mean, oh, I know what we could do. This will, I'm I am actually certain now, this, this must, if it doesn't crash it, it's gonna, just going to make it unusably slow. So, we'll do shift A. And I'm going to put a scale node net in now. So I'm going to increase the resolution that all of these networks are receiving to be 4K. So basically, we're going to be processing, all of these nodes are going to be processing six times on a 4K input. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping it doesn't break the computer. So let's just put this to on here. And by the way, the scale nodes are notoriously in the past have been notoriously prone to crashing. So this is just going to be. 
is it going to work? So it's not crashed yet. But as soon as I increase this resolution, so 1080p to 4K, let's plug this in here. So I'm going to multiply it by two. So basically the scale is twice as big. I don't believe it. <laughs> what? I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Well, <laughs> I think that's... Uh, I think it might be indestructible. So, yeah, I think that, that's a testament to the Blender developers that they've just done an absolutely amazing job. I mean, the, there must be world-class developers to have done this. I'm not sure of all the developers that are involved in it. I know you've got Omar and Sergey have been working a lot on the compositor. I'm sure there are lots of others as well, even people that don't work for Blender that just do it you know, as a, um, a contribution, a community contribution. But it's just absolutely incredible. I mean, it's it, I'm speech I'm speechless by that, um, right? And, and anyway, just as an added bonus for anybody still watching, if you've got a Turbo Tools, there is a feature of Turbo Tools. If I just put this to 100% cache, um, I'll just stop playback. Go to frame one. We can actually cache. You know, if you've got massive node trees like this, it's unlikely you're going to have anything this intensive. But there is a feature in Turbo Tools where we can cache entire branches, individual branches, or you know, the entire node tree. What we can do, we just select the end node, so maybe we'll go with this one. I'm going to cache this now, so I'm set this to 100%, and I'll choose in the turbo panel in the compositor, we'll choose cache and cache. So this is going to add a cache node here, which is basically going to replace all of these nodes over here. Now, if I play this back, we're going to get the same frame over and over, because it's only cached one frame. You'll see these two nodes here are still working, but this, or anything below this are not. So what we need to do to get the cache to update so it covers the entire frame range is just tick this box here, update cache during playback, and now if I press play, it's going to be recalculating that entire node tree as we go. And probably one thing you also want to do is, let me just stop that a second, is go down here. Oh, it is on play every frame. I wasn't even using frame dropping. What? Oh my, so that was actually going that fast, playing every single frame. That is even more incredible. Anyway, for now, we'll just update the cache. You can see what it's doing. It's actually calculating, and now it's a bit slower because it's storing this into um, a new EXR. So it's using, basically, it's using a file output node to generate new cache. So I'll let this complete and uncheck the update option. And now you can see playback is way smoother because Blender is no longer calculating all those nodes downstream. And if we wanted to at this point, we could then continue, you know, doing new things uh, in real time as well. So, yeah, pretty, pretty insane. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, unable to destroy Blender, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, I think I think is probably more fair to say. And uh, yeah, massive thanks to the Blender developers. I'll catch you in the next one.